New York City and Altoona, Pennsylvania police say they have a person of interest arrested on firearms charges. And the CBC's Mark Harkisol joins me now with more. So Mark, what did we hear in that news conference last hour? Well, Andrew, we found out that this morning police were called to a McDonald's in the town of Altoona, Pennsylvania, which is about a two hour drive east of Pittsburgh. When they got there, they arrested a person of interest in connection to the killing of Brian Thompson, the CEO of United Healthcare in New York. This man was said to have had many things in common with, uh, many similarities, many things consistent with the suspect in the Brian Thompson killing. As you mentioned, Andrew, the man in Altoona was arrested on firearms charges, but uh, New York's commissioner, Jessica, uh, Je Jessica Tisch, spoke to reporters today talking about some of the things found on his person that might connect him with the Brian Thompson killing. Upon further investigation, officers recovered a firearm on his person, as well as a suppressor, both consistent with the weapon used in the murder. They also recovered clothing, including a mask, consistent with those worn by our wanted individual. Also recovered was a fraudulent New Jersey ID, matching the ID our suspect used to check into his New York City hostel before the shooting incident. Additionally, officers recovered a handwritten document that speaks to both his motivation and mindset. Now, police say that manifesto didn't make any specific threats toward anyone in particular, but did speak ill of corporate America. Arrested is Luigi Mangioni. He's 26 years old, originally from Maryland. He is said by police to have gone to college in Pennsylvania. His last known address was somewhere in Hawaii. Now, we mentioned earlier he faces firearms charges, not a murder charges, and that's because the firearms charge that he faces is in Pennsylvania for the gun that he had on his possession that police believe is some kind of ghost gun, a gun made up of various parts that you buy online. They're not registered. They don't have serial numbers. It's expected that NYPD investigators who are on their way to New York as we speak to question him will likely charge him in connection with the Brian Thompson shooting. At least that's the uh, message that we were given by police in their news conference earlier today. Interesting to note that today uh, would have been the sixth day of the manhunt for Brian Thompson's killer. Today is also the day of a private funeral service for Brian Thompson. He's been laid to rest by his family today. Uh, no comment from them yet as to how they feel, how they're reacting to the potential arrest of a suspect in his shooting. But uh, this was all uh, police credited to the, you know, the putting out of the, the video, mm -hmm. the putting out of the photos of the suspect. They thank the public. They say that this is proof that uh, what they always say, if you see something, say something. Uh, it really works if you do it. Mm -hmm. And it was an employee at a McDonald's in Altoona that was the one who spotted him, right? Yeah, police say he was just yeah. sitting there eating. Yeah. Uh, they're not saying, at least mm -hmm. at this point, how he got there, but it was an employee who spotted him and an employee who uh, called in police. All right, Mark, thank you. The CBC's you. Mark Carcassol. So let's stay on the story and bring in Celia Mendoza. She is a reporter for The Voice of America and is at the White House. And Celia, you shuttle between New York City and Washington. Can you just give us an idea of just how big of a story this is? This is a huge story, not only because of the way it happened, but uh, also the sentiment that has brought up within the public, the president of the United States uh, received information after the killing of the CEO of United Healthcare. And uh, we also have seen the Manhattan expanded rapidly over the past few days. The fact that it happened in a really busy area and the Times Square area, but also that this suspect was able to evade authorities for a long period of time created concern that he might be after other possible um, CEOs or persons involved in the healthcare industry. The motives have, are not clear, as uh, you mentioned earlier, but um, they're trying to piece together how everything came about. So far, the authorities have said that they believe that this was a specifically targeted to this CEO, the United Healthcare, and looks like the suspect, of course, has some ill feelings against the healthcare industry. And that comes to Washington, of course, uh, knowing the Congress as well as, as some of the representatives have been questioning um, the practices and how um, people get coverage in the United States. We're talking about a $4.5 trillion healthcare system in the United States where complaints have often uh, come about. And remind us, Celia, of the role the public has played in this investigation leading up to today's major developments. 
it's absolutely necessary for the public to participate. Not only the public, but also the media has played a big role. The fact that he was identified uh, because of uh, two photographs that initially uh, presented his face. Uh, he, according to the information we have now, um, where uh, the mask the whole time he was in New York. He was there 10 days before the actual attack. But uh, during his check-in at the hostel, looks like he was flirting with the girl who was doing the check-in that prompted him to lower his mask that gave an opportunity to the authorities to be able to give these uh, photos uh, just in the past uh, two days. Additional photos uh, were issued and that made uh, possible for the, the uh, McDonald's employee in Altoona to be able to see him and immediately call the authorities. The um, see something, say something is a policy that has grown in the United States, especially after the 9-11 attacks. And New York is very conscious of that, but also the cities and the areas around it. And Celia, you know, obviously no one ever, ever would condone uh, the killing of, of anybody, uh, but there have been some negative public sentiments towards private insurers since the killing of Brian Thompson. How do you think that could play out politically? Uh, social media has been flooded with messages, even though it's, uh, people are concerned about what happened. Some of them actually um, use phrases like, my thoughts and prayers were denied. And this is actually referring to the fact that insurance um, a lot of times, and, and that goes directly to the messages that the killer left on the scene um, on the actual cases of the bullets, uh, referring to this denied, uh, deposed, uh, defy, try to um, challenge and, and sometimes presented by customers. And what we have seen is definitely an um, a sentiment of a rejection and also hatred against um, health insurance and the practices that they use. And this is something that uh, lawmakers in the United States, especially here in the capital of the United States, are looking over to see how that can be uh, adjusted. We have to remember that uh, during the Obama administration, um, they were able to pass um, a, a reform on the healthcare system to provide coverage. But now the issue is how that coverage is presented to the um, people that actually is using the system. And a lot of cases, they feel that they're being abused by the uh, big money of the healthcare industry. Celia, thank you. Celia Mendoza of The Voice of America reporting for us in Washington.